Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer Podcast. Uh, we are on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud. And if you're listening right now on iTunes, please go and leave a five-star review. I will be reading the best or worst or creepiest or weirdest reviews every week so long as they are five stars. So just go ahead, get on there, click the five stars. You know, you can you can hit on me. It's all good. Uh, and I'll read the fu- the most funnest ones. And, uh, and yeah, it'll be good. Um, really excited about my new sponsor, Silk City Hot Sauce. Um, just go to silkcityhotsauce.com. Use the promo code CMP to get, I think it's 15% off. I should know. I should know the exact amount. I thought I was going to wing this read and turns out, no, I need something printed in front of me. It's all good. Um, SilkCityHotSauce.com. Use the code CMP for what I think is 15% off. It might be more. You know what? I'm going to post in the notes so you guys know exactly. But what I do know is that they'll send, they'll throw in a free bottle of cherry sriracha. I don't know what that is. I can't wait to try it. Speaking of can't wait, can't, I'm really excited to have this guy on the podcast. I've been trying to get him forever. He's a hot ticket. He's in demand. And, and you'll see why. Uh, he is an internationally known dating coach and founder of Trip Advice, which is a men's uh, dating advice website. His YouTube channel, Trip Advice, has 863,000 subscribers. Holy shit. Trip Kramer. How are you? I wish there was like a... Uh, an applause track. You know, I'm going to add <laughs> you, one in. You, you just made I it sound like you're like, Trip Kramer. I was like, oh. I Even really there's do. there's no one here clapping. But because I okay. host a lot of comedy shows, or I did before the pandemic. And, uh, and so I always introduce podcast guests like, I'm welcome to the stage, you know. And I, and I think I will add in an applause. I'm good. I think I can figure that out. It'll be fun. Yeah. <sighs> I think that's. And for yourself, too, you can say, you know, when you, when you, if you ever do your own podcast episodes. And now me. Oh yeah. Chrissy Mayer. Welcome. Woo-hoo. Me. Um, Trip, I love your channel so much. Um, we've been going back and forth for a few weeks talking about doing this. And in the meantime, I have gone onto your YouTube. I've watched so many of your videos. And what I really, really love about what you do is that you combine um like practical tips, like how to touch a woman, um, how the art of fingering a woman. Um you know, but then you also add in like kind of the, the trickier, more emotional part of it. And you'll have videos that like, uh, that are titled, uh, the silent way men show girls they're whipped, which was like, wow, that's really eye catching. Uh, should you be faithful to somebody else's girlfriend? What to do if she loses interest? You speak to kind of, which I feel like a lot of advice people are not really doing, um, I try to hit, I try to hit everything as much as I can. Any questions that guys have, I try to tackle. So everything with uh, involving dating, sex and relationships. Uh, you know, it's funny. People always ask me like, cause I put out probably 700 videos or maybe even more at this what? point on YouTube. Cause I've been doing it for so long. And people ask me like, how do you come up with new material? And it's like, well, the material is the same. I do repeat myself quite a bit. There's only so many answers, but there's so, but there are an infinite amount of questions. Because there's always right. little questions based on specific things, um, but you know I do have the answers to to most of them because I've I've built that up over the years. But there's always a new question, and there's always a new technology coming out. Right? It's like I wasn't talking about dating apps until maybe 2014, but previous to that, I've been putting out a lot of content. So it's like even every year, new things happen with technology. There's always something to talk about. And it's so true because you could get the same advice from like a few different people, but like if someone just hits you with the same thing that maybe other people have been saying for a while, but it just hits you different then you're like, Oh, I yeah. get it. So how long have you been doing videos for? Well, I started doing videos in 2012. So I, I believe it was August of 2012 was I, I put on my first YouTube video, but I was giving dating advice since 2009. I just didn't start the YouTube channel. It's funny because there are times when people or guys, they, they ask me like, Oh, you're, you do coaching. Like they're, they're, they're not understanding that the YouTube channel is not all I do. It's the, (laughs) it's the support for what I do, but I was coaching before that. So they think I'm just doing it kind of just as a hobby or for fun, but it is uh, the YouTube channel was a way to get the word out there. You know, just yeah. like I do a podcast also. I had you on my podcast. That's another way 
to to advertise and, and let people know that there's help available to you if you need help in this arena. The YouTube, your YouTube channel is like one big commercial for the, the, the services you offer, but just it's a ton of free information. There's like, uh, I would say thousands of dollars worth of information and tips on there. And um, I was listening to the one that you said, are you, should you be faithful to somebody else's girlfriend? And that really struck me because you, you were saying in the video, like, you know, of course, you know, you shouldn't date somebody with a boyfriend. Um, but a lot of times people be like, well, she seemed really into me. And you were like, no, definitely not. And not even date a girl who's fresh out of a relationship. You said that you should wait, what, like six months to date a girl who's just gotten out of a relationship. And then when I heard that, I went, oh shit, because I went straight from my last relationship into my current one. And I remember like um, me and my ex broke up like June of 2014. And then I was like talking to the, my current boyfriend, Frank. And then by November of 2014, we were like a thing. And then so I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> Did I fuck it up? But then I remember I spent our first date talking about what a douchebag my ex was. And I broke every single rule. I was like, I put the soy sauce in my sake. I was a <laughs> fucking mess. I was so messy. But it worked out is what you're it saying. It did work out. I mean, we lived together. So there's that. Um, hey, there's always exceptions. You know, I, these are not these are not rules, um, but they're guidelines that that help you optimize your, your, the way you're going to find someone who's a good fit for you, you know? And I remember I had a girlfriend who was like, you need to take more time in between relationships. You can't just like, she was right. Jump. For, oh, you I think still she think was she was right. right. Well, I, I think it's, it, it is good to take time. I mean, it's funny because it's not the guy that needs to wait. Well, a guy should wait also if he's out of a relationship, but it's more like if you meet a girl who is fresh out of a relationship, you don't need to wait for her. Just you, you move on and then maybe you'll run into her again. You know, she's fresh out a month. Don't wait. Do not wait five don't months wait. To, yeah, to, to, to be with her. You know, it's like that's a, that's a very long time. That's time when you could be finding someone else who's a really good fit. Because I try to mm. teach guys that you need to be going after and trying to date a lot of women to find a good match. So so there's kind of like this qualified and, and disqualified and there's many disqualifiers. One of them is if she just got out of a relationship. You just don't want that. And, you, and, and same for guys. Like if you just got out of a relationship, you shouldn't be dating either right away. You need to you go should, through yeah. the healing process. Wait you're, you're until broken. You are definitely not going to call out your ex's name in bed. And I think, right, you said it <laughs> yeah. takes about six months to not call out your ex's name in bed. I think that's what you said on your video. <laughs> it just, uh, it takes a minute. It takes a minute. So yeah, you got to be prepared been, for that. I should have been doing therapy. I should have been, I should have been making lists. And I remember at the time, like Oprah was like, make a list of 10 things you want in a guy or whatever. And then I think I just met my current boyfriend. I was like, wow, he has a car, you know, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> Throw out the list. He's got a car. He has a car. We can go places. Yeah. Do you think it's important for women also to be dating multiple guys at the same Absolutely. time? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, how are you going to find someone that's a good match? You could, you know, we go down these dead end paths. It's like you date someone for a long time. And, and a lot of those times you're kind of hoping that they're going to be great, but you're secretly know that they're not. So you really got to know what it is you're looking for. I think it should be a short list. I like a list of three. Just three things? Just three things. After, after three, it gets exponentially harder and it becomes too narrow. Your pool becomes too narrow. And then it becomes way too hard to find someone who's a good match. You know, I, I had this one friend of mine and this girl who sent me a list of literally 30 different things. Whoa. And I was like, you're never going to find that. You're just not like, let's be realistic. You're not going to find someone who has everything you're looking for. So again, and this is not to settle. No one should ever settle. People think when I say like, oh, you should date a lot of people. They're like, well, you're just whoring yourself around. And no, no, no. You date a lot of people in order to have a lot of people to filter through your three non-negotiables that you're looking for. So you need to know what those are and they need to... And they need to work for you. You know, you can't just go. If you're going on dates and not trying to see if this person is a good match, what are you doing? 
uh, getting free dinners. Trip. There you go. Getting, oh, sure. getting a lot of free salads. That's hey, what and, we and do. if you want to do that, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, you know, by all means, you can get your free dinners. But if you're looking for something and you are eventually looking for a relationship, if your goal is not just free dinners, which most women, it is a relationship. <laughs> right. You're going to be wasting your time. And for women, and I don't, I don't speak to a lot of women for advice, but if I had to kind of apply to women, you're on a serious time crunch. You know, uh, if, you, if yeah. you want kids, if yeah. you want kids, I mean, ideally, you, you know, you want kids as early as possible. So it's the healthiest to have a baby, right? So yeah. again, it's not to rush either. You got to have your three non-negotiables. So you got to make sure that the per, that you're working with, you got to know who's qualified and disqualified to be with you. So you have your three non-negotiables and then you also need to know if this person is an adult. Mm. that's the very simple way of putting it. Like, are they mature? Are they emotionally mature? Do they have mommy issues, daddy issues? Do they have friends? Can they take care of themselves? And it's funny. Like, I, I learned all this through my past relationships because I, I dealt with women who were either not a good fit or, and, or they were not a good fit and they were not adults yet. I mean, they were by age, but not mentally, you know, they were not there yet. And so, you're going to run into a lot of trouble there. So How it's are, a harsh yeah. process. Definitely. How are the ways in which uh, men and women show that they are like not adults yet, right? Like somebody could be in their 20s and 30s, but like what would you say are the kind of red flags of like, oh, this person's not an adult yet? Go into their house and see how clean it is. Oh my God. I'm not yeah. talking about two dishes from the night before. No big deal. Well, uh, let's be realistic here. But let's, and here's a true story. Let's walk into a place, find that there is clothes everywhere, Uh a red wine stain on their bedroom floor, a bed that is not put to put together yet with a mattress on the floor. Oh God. And a disgusting bathroom. By the way, this is a girl I'm talking about. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, Holy shit. How old was this girl? 23. Oof. I mean, that's still pretty young. Um, it is, but that doesn't mean you should date someone. You know, it's not like, well, they're young. I get it. They haven't learned how to live on their own. It doesn't matter. And it's still shitty. You still don't still want funny. that person who doesn't have that together. So um, that's that's one way of looking at things. If you want a real practical way, that's a that's a great way. That's why um, I never drink red wine in my in my bedroom. Just shots and clear liquors and re- white wine. <laughs> and if you do... Pick something up that removes the stain or at least attempt it. Yeah, that's that's really bad. Wow. Yeah. Hey, I'm guilty. You know, this is a true story. So it's and someone I dated for longer than I should have. But, you know, those are just signs I didn't look for because what happens, it's really hard to think logically and rationally for men and women when you're in love chemical zone, when mm-hmm. you're just like really uh, uh, attracted to them, sexually attracted to them, you have a good time with them. That stuff is great of course you want to have that but that is not going to matter down the line if you see red flags so the red flags will then present themselves even stronger and it will it can destroy a relationship so you have to look for those things yeah and because you'll be resentful right because the love chemicals fade after i mean i've heard that they fade after six months i've heard that they fade after two years it's like six to 18 months anywhere in that range and so after, yeah, after the, your brain is done being excited about that new dick, <laughs> then you need to like look around, okay, is this person a good partner? Is this a good long-term? Like, yeah, are the friend elements there? Are the partner elements there? Right. And if someone can't, well, that's the thing is like, that's the one thing that's always bothered me about my boyfriend. He doesn't pick up his clothes. And, uh, <laughs> but you know what, but you know what, let me say something about that. Maybe that's not a big deal. Me, you know, it, 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 maybe that's not one of your three non-negotiables too. Like, okay. Maybe he's got a lot of other things going for him, but he leaves his clothes on the ground. It's a different if he's yeah. a disaster, he's a tornado. Um, but you know, okay, he leaves his clothes on the ground. Whatever is he, is he uh, a, a good person to be spending time with? Is he someone who's very successful with his work? Is he very uh, attentive? Is he good in bed? You know, if you have all these other great things, because you're not going to have it all. But he no. leaves some of his clothes on the ground sometimes. 
Yeah, I would big, be like, big deal. I always say, you know, I'm not going to look at the clothes on the ground if my eyes are rolling back in my head. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I like that. Um, that's interesting. And you talk, you have a video about, let's see. Yeah. Keeping your power, which is, which is, I don't know if that's the title. Oh, it's called the silent way men show girls they're whipped. And it was about, and of course it's like, like many of your videos geared towards men, but you talked about the importance of keeping your power and um that speak oh this i thought was so cool that speaking up creates attraction so i'm listening to your video and and you're describing a a guy who's like maybe a people pleaser you know whatever you say honey happy that the guys who go around saying happy wife happy life which is usually a thing you hear older guys saying right where they sort of just like they throw their hands up and they they don't never seem super happy in their relationship and uh it's and it was interesting because you were like, if you don't just, you have to say what you want, because if you're always doing what the girl wants to do, hanging with her friends, if you notice you're not seeing your friends as much anymore, and you're just like, I don't know, maybe seeing the movies she wants to see. And if it's too much about what she wants, then you're going to like lose your power. And I'm listening to it. I'm like, holy shit, I do the same exact thing. Like I get into a, when I'm like by myself or whatever, it's, it's all good. But when I get into a relationship, I get into people pleaser mode. And I'm just like, it's so easy for me to be just like agreeable. I'm like, let's get yeah. along. Like, let's do the things you want to do. And, and it's then counterintuitive. I'll do, yeah. It's counterintuitive. You think that that's going to create more bond and attraction. Cause you're like, whatever you want. Like, yeah, let's, you know, cause you're, you're, you're just agreeing and letting them have their way and what they want all the time. Yeah. Let's see that movie. Yeah. Let's eat that food. Yeah. I agree with you. Yes, yes, yes. And so you think it makes sense, right? Like, Oh, you, you do the things that they want, then they'll be happy. And therefore you'll be you'll building like more, more attraction. Right. Yeah. You'll want me more. You'll like me more. You'll want to have sex more, all that stuff. But really what happens in that process is you are saying, you are subcommunicating to your partner. You're more important than me. I don't have worth. And then that shows insecurities and low self-esteem. And that's what becomes unattractive. Which I have, and I'm constantly (laughs) fighting against. And then when I- Hey, we all have it to some degree. (laughs) You know, I heard and, you put it together that like lack of um, verbalizing what you want equates to low self-esteem. I was like, ah, oh, fuck. Because I have a great self-esteem when it comes to so many other things, but like- well, What I've, things do you have it, have it for and have it don't have it for? I'm great when it comes to like, I feel like I've my habits with my career have gotten better. Like with comedy, I'm, I'm way less afraid to go for the things I want than I was like even a couple of years ago. Um, like for my friends or, or if someone's like, you know, like there was a woman before the quarantine who was like drunk and she like tripped and fell and she, we were headed towards a train, right? In Grand Central. And she like literally cracked her head open, was passed out and bleeding. I was like immediately dropped all my bags. Like the train was about to leave, but I was like not even thinking about it. I was like, oh, I have to like turn this lady over and, and help wait for the uh, EMTs to come or whatever. So like anytime someone needs something, I'm there. If somebody's sick, boom, like I got you. It's like, it, it's like this thing that just jumps out of me. I think that's feel like okay. It's, it's okay to do that. It's just not okay to, um, here's the, here's the analogy. It's not okay to, you know, when they say when a plane is going down, you put your oxygen mask on first before you help your child, mm-hmm. because if you don't have the oxygen, then you won't be able to help. And then both people die. So it's kind of like that analogy is make sure you're putting the oxygen mask on yourself first. So it's okay to help others and be there for others. But if it comes with the price of you not being there for yourself, then that's where there's some insecurities and a lack of self-love. Queer eye. Queer eye. <laughs> shows it all, you know. Um, no, but seriously, it, it's, it, you got to have that or else you look weak. You look weak in front of your partner. You don't mm-hmm. want a partner who doesn't want to take care of themselves. It's just, you know, like, yeah, it'd be nice to have a girlfriend that's, doing all these things for me but if she's doing it only to seek love it's like that's gross like i don't want i want you to do that because you love me not to seek love and you love yourself if you're just saying like yeah whatever you want you're boring and you're insecure and now there's no spark there anymore and that goes with with men too it's a little bit stronger in terms of for men i mean if a man shows that if a man shows that 
it's it's way more unattractive. A woman will find him more unattractive faster than a man for a woman. Because Isn't that women interesting? want that. I always thought like, okay, am I like so classically old school? Because I've always liked it when guys make the first move. I've always liked it when guys initiate in bed. But then like, you know, with my current relationship, like my boyfriend wants me to initiate more. And like, I know that mentally, but I just have such a hard time doing it because it's so hot for me when, when he makes the first move. And like, and I also have such a hard time, like telling him exactly what to do. Cause I get in my head, like he should know what to do. We've been together for five years. Well, yeah. Everything you're saying is very, that's very normal. That's how most women are thinking. I don't even think that's an insecurity or anything. That's, that's just the masculine and the feminine, you know, the woman wants to receive and the man wants to, to, to give. It's kind of like if you look at a penis and a vagina, right? Penis goes in a vagina, vagina receives, penis gives. It's the same idea too is on, on all these other areas is you want him to lead because it's more attractive. You want him to initiate because it's more attractive. It feels a little bit more masculine for you to be more dominant in the bedroom. Now, if he wants that, I would say, listen to that and you should do that every once in a while. But if he wants that all the time, now that's a problem. That's going to be a problem for you because now that's you really stepping into a masculine role that doesn't create that sexual energy for you because you're a woman. Right. Like when in your video, when you were giving the tip of like picking somebody up, like picking a girl up and going into the bedroom, I even like, I let out like a, a verbal, I was like, whoa, I was like, I was like, I don't think anyone's picked me up and uh, carried me. Now the imagine the opposite for a second. Yeah. Now this is comedy. Imagine, <laughs> imagine a man and a woman making out because we should give a little context. So what Chrissy, you're talking about is, is, you know, two people like making out on the couch and a guy like picks a girl up and walks her and then brings her into the bedroom. Right. And you've seen that before. You've seen that in movies. Maybe you've done that yourself. Imagine a woman doing that, right? Like, I'm thinking in my head like I'm laughing because that's, like, that's like a funny something picture. something you would see in like a, like a hangover Parody. movie. Right. Like, yeah. Or Naked Gun. Do you remember those An movies? An Adam Sandler movie. Yeah, like a, the girl going, come here, I'm going to snap yeah. you in half. And she picks him up. It's like, to me, like any, probably any guy listening or even any girl listening or watching is thinking, yeah, that's kind of funny. You don't see that that often. Why? Because that is not the natural role for a woman to lead like that. I'm not saying that she's not equal, doesn't have the ability to do it. I'm just saying that it's not as attractive. Mm -hmm. It doesn't create that sexual energy. We're just talking about more the biology between the man and the woman here. Yeah. It just, it creates that like, mm, okay. You know, it makes your. Right. You can't even describe it. It's even Body hard parts. for you to, to, to understand. Somebody you know? one God, somebody had a tweet where like, <laughs> if you see a guy and your and your pussy has a pulse, then you know. And I was like, oh my God. Or like it has a heartbeat. Like if you just feel, if you like feel something down there, I was like, oh yeah, I know that feeling. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you said like that distance creates desire and that's yeah. good. And I think a lot of people have been tested with that during this lockdown because they've been like, I mean, Ooh, I have no not distance. seen, there's no distance, there's no anymore. distance, there's yeah. no distance. And you're just every day, which is nice. And it's like, I've seen my boyfriend more in these last few months than in five years. And it's like, it's ho like, holy shit. But it is hard. Cause it's just like, you have no more routine. And it's like, I, you know, I mean, I'm wearing a dress right now for this recording, but like, I'm not wearing my usual, like, yeah. cause there's nowhere to go. You're not going out. There's no dates. So it's like, no, high yeah, it's heels. a lot of things. Yeah. There, there's no, there's no moment. There's no, there's not a lot more opportunities to, to get all dressed up and look sexy for your man. And there's yeah. a lot of, and so I, I got this more from Esther Perel, who's a sociologist. She talks a lot about uh, she has a book called Mating in Captivity, and she talks a lot about Ooh. the idea where when you're first going through the courtship process and you're first getting to know somebody, there is an abundance of mystery because you don't know them yet. So because there's a lot of mystery, that leads to a lot of excitement. And you, you're excited. You want to get to know the person. You don't know what they're like in bed. You don't know what they're like here and there. Like you don't know yet, and that makes it exciting. And so what happens, and, and this is kind of funny, is you crave that, like you want to know more, you want to know more, you want to be closer, like you want to hang out with them all the time, like you crave it, and that's fine. But if you do it too much, you, the mystery starts to die. So as much as you want it, it's not good for it. So when you get into a relationship, 
you need to make sure that you do have distance. Mm-hmm. I don't mean you go away for a week, <laughs> but you know what? When that hey! happens, <laughs> <laughs> just shout from out the window. Right, yeah. exactly. But you know what? When distance. like a when like a, a guy or a girl goes away on a on a, a business trip, isn't it nice? Oh, I haven't seen you in like four or five days. Imagine you're living together. You've been in a relationship for a few years. They go away. You're excited to see them again, right? That that excitement. Oh, yeah. It's right there. So that's a great like, example. Like, Who the fuck were you with? <laughs> be like, <laughs> that's oh. your insecurities playing out. Oh yeah, they're they're always there waiting. And I like that you talk <laughs> about the um, showing that you're a high value partner. You know, like don't forget about the things that you love to do. And like they, you're you know you're the guy or the girl picks up on whether you see yourself as high value, which I always do a really good job of until I get into a relationship. And then I go back to like, I think, cause it's my childhood. Like I was such a people pleaser to like everybody in my family. And it was like no conflict. And it was like, you know, you just, I was used to the things that I like to do. Nobody else really did. And so right. I just was like, Oh, I'll do this on my time. But then, you know, when I talked to my therapist about that, they're like, you're actually robbing the person of getting to know you. If you are cutting off that part of yourself. That um, is really that, very smart therapist. That's, that's like perfect. I'm not a therapist, so I'm not one to like judge and critique, but that sounds really great. I mean, yeah, that's a great way of putting it is you're robbing the other person of really getting to know the real you and who you are. You know, imagine if like you wanted, here's a, just a very simple example. And you and I were dating and you always wanted to go see the movies I wanted to see. Cool, fun. But like, am I really getting to know you? What do you Mm -hmm. like? What are you interested in? It's a very one-sided relationship and it doesn't, allow for much connection yeah yeah for sure um what i like that you said only three like if you were going to say what were your three things are like if you had to do like i don't know i did i I did have three i did have three and they were you'll love these lots of lots of comedy in here you'll love these so okay so one simple and enthusiastically wants children Oh, okay. So I don't cute. want someone to just maybe want kids. I want them to want kids. That's really cute. Right. So I want that. Well, you have to, it's not even cute. Like this is like you, like all guys and women should have that. Cause imagine, be, imagine by the way, not unless you don't want kids, then you want the opposite. If you don't want kids, that's fine. Then you better be with someone who really, really doesn't want kids because yeah, you have okay. to be on that same page. That's going to be a huge. Eventually that's going to be a huge part of the relationship. So you don't want someone who's gonna be a half-assed mom. You want someone who's going to want to be a mom, you know, yeah. it's like you want them to want that. So they'd be a good mom. So that's my first one. Enthusiastically wants children. My second one is physically fit. So I want someone who's active because that says to me that they're always going to be in good shape and prioritize health. And I want someone who's going to be healthy. And then my so third that you one can pick them up and take them to the bedroom. Exactly. Throwing exactly. out your back. <laughs> exactly. Well, then I better be physically fit too. So we both get, know, better that's be. That's why on I'm that like, page. shit, maybe I need to lose some LBs. Maybe then I'm not pick upable right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's your the new book for women. How to be pick upable. Literally yeah. <laughs> pick upable. There you go. Um, all right. So the third one is no more than two thousand dollars in credit card debt. Ooh. <laughs> You like that one? <laughs> yeah, I didn't have that um, a couple of years ago, but now I'm uh, now I'm there. That's, that's good. I mean, that's good. not that's, that's not. Really this good. is not me saying every guy should have this. These are mine. These are mine. You know, I these are and I, it's funny. I picked these, and as time went on, I realized, oh, every single one of these came from a past relationship. All the same woman, like after you had no, that woman. Uh, oh no, d- different. Like every woman, like every woman embodied one of these. Like meaning, one didn't really want kids. Another one wasn't really physically fit or into being healthy. And another one had really bad, not credit card debt, but she was just um, really terrible with her finances. Okay. So the reason why I came up with that one is because I was like, well, I need something. If I, if I just say I want someone who's good with their finances, that's not really good because it's so vague. How will I know? Like they could have money in the bank or it's like, do they have a trust fund or like, yeah. You like, have to be I don't know. I mean, it, it, I gotta be like, how will I know that? Like what's proof th- of that to me? So I know otherwise, what's the point of having a non-negotiable if you can't know if they have it. So mm-hmm. I was like, well, let me think. Well, that's not necessarily that they're rich because you could be rich and be terrible with money. I was like, well, I think credit, I was just thinking like, well, credit card debt seems to be a pretty good indicator of, of money responsibility. It is. And I said, well, what if someone's $50? That doesn't say it. So I'm like, well, there has to be a number. Was it 5,000? Yeah, 5,000, that's a lot. 
Um, and then, then I just came out, I said, you know, 2000, that seems okay. Like, okay, maybe you're 2000, you know, maybe you just bought something like big deal. But yeah. so that's Trip where I just Italy came up with that. That you never really paid off. I'm just talking about me. And then it grows. <laughs> hey, there you go. That's a little self-love right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And it was like, I went to Italy with my ex and I'm still fucking paying for it. That was like years ago. It's was okay. It a, was it a good time? No. <laughs> See, here's what I did. He was an alcoholic, so he didn't drink. So I'm in Italy. I think I had one glass of wine the whole trip because I didn't want to like trigger him. And I didn't want to like throw it in his face that I was drinking. Cause he always said to me, like, cause we were both comedians and he would always say to me, if you have more than, um, either it was one or two drinks. If you have more than one or two drinks, I don't want to see you that night. Like that was his rule. And I was like, I like that. I don't know. It, I mean, you like that? I thought it was kind of like a bit harsh. Well, there's, it, it's, it, then it's not a fit. That's just my yeah. opinion. You know what I mean? Some people like to drink and they want to be with someone who likes to drink with them. Some people are more sensitive to it. I'm a little bit more sensitive to it at times, you know, but that's just me. That's the thing about the non-negotiable too. It's, it's, it's personal to you and what you're looking for. So, you know, you can get ideas from other people. Um, and by the way, I talk about this all in my Hooked program. So I have this online course that outlines this to make it easier for guys to understand this. So I talk about how to figure out what they are. You can actually figure out what those are for you Ooh. when I give you examples and then how to ask questions to figure that out. Because here's what dating is. Dating is leads and filtering. Okay. So imagine a funnel. You know, like what a funnel looks like. It's like, yes, I saw down. a lot of them in college. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From what chemistry? Oh, oh sure. Yeah, beer bombs. Oh, yeah. And chemistry. <laughs> I wasn't that quick. Drinking, the chemistry. Yes. Drinking all the chemicals. So think of the perfect. Let's think about the beer bong. Okay. So the beer bong, you pour the beer in and it filters. Actually, this is not a good example because it doesn't filter. <laughs> it just pours in. We need a filter in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So imagine just a funnel and you're putting a lot of women into the funnel. That means a lot of dates. You're going on a lot of dates, but only a certain select will go through the funnel. That's the non-negotiables. That's the filter right there. They got to pass through that filter in order to go on more dates with them. So that's, but you don't know who's going to have your non-negotiables and probably most women won't. And it's just the odds, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. you need to increase your odds, which is why you need to go on a lot of dates. You'll be going on a lot of first dates, but as the dates go on less and less and less. Yeah. And, and like, I guess if you're noticing like, man, what is kind of pissing you off early in a relationship or what do you kind of like physically kind of like, Ooh, you know, kind of like move away from, I was noticing that when I was dating more, just like, Oh, I don't know why, but this annoys me so much. Um, I would use that. But yeah. Like, that's I, a, yeah. Using your past is great. Yeah. What are the, like the most like if someone's listening to this and be like, Hmm, I don't know if I should do this hooked masterclass. Like what are some of the most like common mistakes you think guys make or what are the most common yeah. things you coach guys on? Well, I'll explain what the hooked masterclass is. So it's an online course. So basically what happens is you get access to a member's portal online. And so you'll get a username and password and you'll log in. And I'm being very specific here because I know that still, I feel like online courses are new to people. People usually have you know, read books and things like that. They want to, to get a lot of information. So it's a course where you log into a member's area and it's, it's separated by, I, I have five different courses, but the hooked is the main one and you watch a series of videos. So what the whole class does is it, and, and it's not a class with people, it's just videos that you watch and it teaches you how to meet women, how to get more women attracted to you, how to build confidence how to be able to flirt with women, how to get more dates, how to find which women will be the right match for you. And basically in like a nutshell teaches guys how not to settle. Like if you want the perfect 10, like your perfect 10, this class and this video program will teach you how to do it. And it doesn't matter if you think like, oh, a lot of guys are like, well, I'm not rich, I'm ugly, I'm short. That stuff doesn't matter. I go through how attraction actually works. You and I tapped into it a little bit today. I've slept with so many unattractive guys, Trip. It would blow your mind. There you go. Uh, just there you lots go. of poor and, and losers. So many. A yeah. lot of attractive <laughs> women have, but there's a reason why. You found them attractive in some sense because for women, it's more about- It was late the, at night. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, Both alcohol maybe. Drink. Yeah. <laughs> but I teach guys how to, be, how to build an emotional response. Women become attracted by the more the emotional response from a man 
rather than what he actually looks like. So this yeah, how they make them how feel how, exactly big. how you make yeah. them feel. So, uh, so yeah, it teaches you how to do that. It's, but if anyone wants it, it's at getherhooked.com. The, the program's called Hooked. The website's called getherhooked.com. And you'll watch a video and it'll, it'll teach you all about what the course is about. And then you can get it. It's, it's cheap. It's like 67 bucks. I mean, wow. I don't want to use the word cheap because it's extremely valuable. It is. Um, but uh, I make it affordable so as many guys can get it as possible. At the beginning of the quarantine, I spent like 150 bucks on something that I stick my head in and I go upside down and I've used it like <laughs> three times. I'm currently right now using it as a footrest because um, I was like, oh, I'll be going down. I'll be upside down a lot. I think during this quarantine, it's good for you. Inversion, right? I think I've used it like three times. So Yeah, there you um, go. And a guy, will go on a, no date, a guy will go on a date and spend $100 on, on a girl and then be really excited to see her again. And then she'll ghost him and he'll be like, I just spent a hundred bucks on this girl. What did I do wrong? Yeah. Well, the, what you did wrong is all in the program and it's all about, and they teach and a lot of guys, their minds get blown. Like they get the course and they text me and they're like, Whoa, I had no idea. That's how it worked. And Oh my God, mm -hmm. I've never seen results like this. Like I finally been implementing some of these techniques and it works. And it's not like really weird stuff. That's going to be like, I don't want to do that. Like I remember when I was learning this stuff 10 years ago, I learned like pickup artist techniques and I'd be like, this is weird. Like, and I don't want to wear a big hat. <laughs> I'm not wearing big hats and feather boas. Like this is strange, but it's not about that. I'm not painting my nails black to be interesting. Yeah. And it's, hey, if you want to do that, that's, mm -hmm. that's up to you, but yeah. uh, that's not, that's not the way to get way. Uh, a woman attracted. It's probably practical stuff. Like one of your videos, you said like texts are for logistics and not getting to know somebody. And that is such a, that's good for men and women. Like you really shouldn't be like, you know, when I would get like, how's your day text to me, that feels like, oh, now I got to, you know, send back three paragraphs. And it's just like, it's, nobody likes hearing that. It's like, it, it, it totally, what you said, it shows the, the person that you're not busy and you don't have like exactly. shit to do. Like you're looking for you that person. Really to really watch fill. these videos. Yeah. You weren't, you weren't I'm, kidding. I'm a big fan. Um, and it shows the other person that like, you don't have shit going on and you're like looking to them to like make yeah. your day interesting, which, yeah. which blows. It's uh yeah. And, and um, I, I was going to say, so I coach guys too. So I do calls. So I do one-on-one -on -one coaching and I just got a text right before we started from a client of mine who he, he just, they haven't even gone on a date yet. Like they just met on the app, but they're both very interested. She's very interested in him. They're going to go on a first date soon, but they went on a couple FaceTime dates to get to know each other. Aww. And it went really well. But then he said, Hey, should I text her? Good morning. Beautiful. Or is that too soon? Classic I'm like, sick text. Way too soon. Do not yeah. send that. Do not send that. Don't send that until you are like in a three year relationship. You don't know okay? if they're beautiful yet. You have to see them, <laughs> you know, in the morning. Sure. Yes. <laughs> There's that. And the fact that you're showing too much interest too soon. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's coming off too smooth, too player ish, and just. It's like you're you're trying to get something. Yes, because that is one of those texts that a girl looks something. at and goes, "How many other girls are getting this fucking text?" You know, like those generic, like, "How's your day?" Or good they've morning, gotten it from ten other guys, so it's not. It's oh, okay. Good morning. It doesn't. And I get it. Listen, I'm not, put, I'm not putting down my client. I'm like, he's an idiot. Like guys don't know this. Yeah. They think Seems that's gonna like be good, a nice right? Idea. Yeah, yeah, it's a compliment. It's nice. No, it doesn't work. Like if anything, you want to get them to chase you a little bit more. You don't want to show everything right up front. And also you haven't been on a date with them yet. So you're really showing like all this interest and it's fake. Hmm. You don't even realize yet till I have to say it to you. It is fake. And like, no, no, no. I think she's beautiful. Yeah. But like you're only, it's a manipulation tactic. You're only saying that to make her feel good because you actually don't know her yet. You don't even know she passes your non-negotiables. You haven't been on a date with her yet. You're actually being more manipulative when you're, when you're giving off these, these generic compliments. Right. They might not deserve you yet because they, you know, might have some lurking bad qualities, I guess. Yeah. Those messy rooms in the wine stains. I'm telling you. The messy room, man. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Have you ever coached somebody where you were like, this motherfucker's uncoachable. <laughs> they are not picking it up. They're having no Maybe success. a few times, like yeah. eight years ago when I first started, when I was just trying to learn like who I could help and who I couldn't help. These days, I have a very rigorous process of who I work with and who I don't work with because I don't want to work with guys who I don't think I can help. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to waste their time. 
um, or their money, obviously. And I don't want to waste my time. It's like, if it's not a good match for us, it's not a good match. So I'm pretty good at, at filtering. Like first they have to fill out an application. And if they fill out the application, then I get on an hour long phone call with them. Wow. And then only after that, do I see if they're going to be a good fit for coaching? So it all, it all depends. Um, I, so I, I make sure not to run into that situation anymore. Like if there's somebody who just, you can't tell them anything, they can't, you have to be coachable. Like if you, you have I imagine to be coachable. If you can't take advice, you don't know anything. How do you know? You know, like if they get def- like, and I can understand getting defensive because it's like, you have to show your vulnerability because you're willing to say, Hey, I need help with something that a lot of guys might think, Oh, this should be coming naturally to me. Like, why should I need coaching for dating? Ugh. Well, that you know. person won't apply. Yeah. That person won't even, I probably won't even talk to that person because if they're in that mindset, they're not, they're not applying. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't, they don't think that they're, they're not ready for that. Yet. Yeah. Sometimes I have guys or actually more than sometimes I'll have a guy who be like, I never thought I would do something like this. Like, I can't believe it. Like, is this a normal thing? And I'll have to reassure them. I've had hundreds of clients. I'm not the only person doing this. Um, not only is it normal and okay, but you are doing the better thing. I mean, I think everyone should get dating coaching. I think everyone should get fitness coaching. I think everyone should be in therapy. I think everyone should do all the things to better themselves. It should never be like, I got this, unless you actually do have it. Like if you really figured it out, but most people haven't. And also we don't learn this stuff in school, which blows my mind. Oh my God. Yeah. It blows my mind too, Drew. Cause like, I remember being in, I think it was like middle school or high school. And the extent of my sex ed was like, carry around this egg for a week and try not to crack it. And then like, if you did that, then you got to carry around a baby. And if you had to like soothe it, if it was crying or something, I ended up just like throwing it in my closet. I was putting a bunch of sweaters over it. And I was like, well, and now I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I'm my age, whatever, with no kids. And it's like, God damn it. I should have learned. Um, the sex ed was so abysmal. It was just, it was just like, yeah, they, they're, they're, I mean, it's tough because the things that you're going to learn, they might not be so applicable right after you leave high school, but still, I don't think it's an excuse not to do it. Like why one of the main, I mean, you have gym class, right? So you have the health figured out. There are like money classes. Like, you know, I remember taking like accounting and entrepreneurship and all that stuff. Um, but no money management, no, like how there to should not be have more it, of that, you know, you had to not have $2,000 on your credit card. So, so triple want to so, date you. Exactly. You know? Exactly. I mean, there's no, yeah, there's no, like how to find the right partner, how to know if, uh, a, a girl or, a, or a boy is going to be, um, you know, uh, someone yeah. that you want to be with, how to, how do you have a conversation after you get in a fight with someone? How about how to make friends? Like all the things that are so crucial to your life. Like I get it. You know, we learn things like geometry and all this stuff, which you're not going to use, but I get it. It's good for your brain. It's good. It's good to go through those exercises. Like I get it. I'm not going to be here and be like, forget trigonometry. They need to learn this. Like, no, but they should add it. That's my new slogan. You just nailed it. You need trigonometry. (laughs) Getterhook.com. Right. And I, it's like, too, it's like, I feel like I learned so many crucial things so fucking late in my life. Like not till I got therapy, did I realize like, oh my God, like I never saw an example of like, like my, you know, just you're examining your patterns, you know, and, and you're you're not, no one is outside of themselves, you know, like nobody knows all there is to know. And I, I just like looked at my parents and I'm like, talk about fucking a generation of people who needed therapy, you know, the baby boomers. And, um, I I started going to therapy when my mom was diagnosed with cancer because I was like, oh, this is, yeah, this is affecting me and I don't want to be like completely useless creatively. Like I don't want to completely shut down and, you know, stop performing because I can't handle this. And right. uh, I just learned like, oh, wow. I never saw all growing up, never saw my mom like stand up to my dad. Like they, he wasn't like beating her up or anything, but like they did not really get along. And she was, she, you know, it would have been nice to hear her say like, oh, hey, don't talk to me like that. Or like, oh, hey, just, you know, they kind of were there. They were separate, but they were together. They would kind of go off and do the things that they liked and like not really involve each other. There was so much, um, 
like passive aggressiveness and resentment between the two of them. I kind of grew up being like really afraid of marriage and like really, you know, and just thinking, oh, any relationship is going to be a huge compromise and what's the point? And it was like crazy. And like my, my dad would always be, when's it my turn? When's my dad? You know, like just, just like not good. And, and then my mom would like, oh my God, she had such a sense of humor. Like she would say like, oh, throughout my whole life, like, uh, I guess, you know, she was, she had a mom body. She wasn't like fat. She was like, maybe she was like 150 ish pounds, like five, three, like standard mom bod, you know? And I guess my dad always wanted her to lose weight. Right. Cause that was his, I guess, non-negotiable, but that I guess, you know, my mom was like, you know, she'd like swim around in a pool, but she wasn't like, let's go hiking every day. And uh, I guess he always wanted my mom to lose weight. And then my mom was like, well, now I have cancer. Now I'm super fucking skinny. <laughs> like, it's terrible, but like it, oh God, it was so funny. Um, so. It's interesting what we learned from our childhood. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, and how it shows up in our relationships. Yeah. And it's, it's good because I think you probably, um, you know, address a lot of those things like with your coaching, you know. How, what's the quickest, like, I don't know, what's like a really good success story? Like, can you think of any? Yeah, I, have, I mean, I have a lot. I mean, I have a guy that I, I mean, I have plenty of guys that I work with that get girlfriends. I never thought they can get like quality girlfriends after we're done working together. I've had guys who lose their virginity after we're done working together. I mean, I've had guys who have just created this awesome, fun dating life, just being able to hook up with the girls they want and have fun and, and, I mean, it's endless. It's, I mean, every guy that, that I work with or gets the hook program, as long as they implement it and do the work, they, they start to live in a world they never thought they could live in because they wow. never thought that it was possible for them to be an attractive man and date the kinds of women that they wanted. So it's, it's all possible. It's not snake oil, but there are, you know, there are things that you can actually do to be and come across more confident. Like your best is, you. Yeah, your best you, which most guys are not doing that right now. And there's some subtle things that you could do. There's some things that take a little bit of work, but it's all an understanding of how women think, how women feel. And then yeah. also a lot of it's like personal development related. As long as you become a more attractive version of yourself, you're just increasing the odds of being able to attract more women. I'm not saying that you can attract any woman you want. That's obviously not realistic, but you can absolutely be attracting more women that you ever thought was possible when you're doing things right. When you're so, putting, when you love yourself and you're putting out a better vibe, like we just sniff totally, that up. Yeah, totally, totally. So yeah, that's what we work on. And so, yeah, it's, uh, those are, I mean, I've worked with guys who have social anxiety and we've been able to get them, Going you mean out and comedians? Getting... <laughs> <laughs> so funny that they that a lot of them have that, even though they can go up on a stage and just perform in front of tons of people. Oh yeah, I mean that's how I got into it. It was the only place I felt like I could be honest because I felt like I couldn't like say how I felt to like the people around me. I was like, oh, it's an act. Um, <laughs> right. I genuinely had fun doing it. Um, how do you differ from other coaches, like? say like a Matthew Hussey, or, I mean, you mentioned someone that kind of inspired you, the one that wrote that book that I did write down, the Made um, in Captivity. Esther Perel. Yeah. She's a, a sociologist. Um, I, you know, it's funny. It's a very transient uh, industry. It's not very big and guys will kind of get in and get out. You know, it's like cool to like be a dating coach for a while and, and then they get sick of it and bored of it because they don't want to talk about the same stuff anymore. And so then they're out. So there's so many people that used to be in the industry that are not anymore. Mm -hmm. There's new guys coming in every day. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to say I'm, I'm better than everyone else. It's more just who you connect with. Exactly. So, like whose message resonates. Right. Like if you're listening right now and you're like, I get what he's saying. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm on his level. Like I vibe with him. Like you can vibe. Like there's certain people I watch in different industries where I'm like, I'm not feeling it. Like, I don't really get mm -hmm. what they're putting out. And there's some guys where I'm like, this person feels like me. Like they're saying everything I'm thinking and, and everything like that. Like, that's just how it is. Like go with the person you vibe with. Yeah. You're not like the swar that you're like a regular, I mean, a regular you're not like dude. a regular guy. You're better than regular, but you're not like with the, you know, you don't have, you're not like holding a jacket over your shoulder. You're not leaning up against the car. You know, there's no pictures of you. Like, you know, your I'm like, I'm like, you're, I'm like the older brother, you know, yeah. I'm just like the older brother, normal dude. 
I've been able to make it work. I, you know, I'm in an amazing relationship right now with a beautiful, talented, smart, fun girl. Um, and I'm not trying to show off. It took me multiple relationships to find that and to get into that, but it's all from, you know, this guy who you look at pictures back, you know, 10 years ago, I was like the biggest nerd. I want to see a picture. Uh, I'll <laughs> go to my website. You'll see, you'll see okay. funny pictures. Uh, so yeah. And so I, I made that transformation, but I'm still me. I'm still like a cool, normal dude, but I'm not like Mr. Badass running a motorcycle. You know, that's, that's not me. That's not me, yeah. but you don't have to be that guy. And I feel like I've proven that. And then once I got a hold of that, I was like, I need to teach guys this. This is what made me want to be a dating coach. I was like, I want to teach, I need to share this information. I need to get this out there and let people know this is possible. And, and I yeah, did. You don't have and, to and buy a new car. That. You just have to like change the car you already have. You got to change the oil. Maybe you got to repaint it. Maybe you got to, I don't know. This is a terrible metaphor. You know, just shine up the car you have. I don't know. You know, know what? Uh, if you can't get a new car, you, yes, you shine up the one you have. We'll, we'll say that. Yeah. If that works. I don't know. How did you meet your current boo? Um, I met her through, I don't even know. It's not like a one answer. Like it wasn't on a dating app and it wasn't from going out and approaching women. It was just, it was one of those moments where I was prepared for it and happened to be, this is why I want to teach guys this stuff. It's like, so you're prepared in the moment to go what for it. Cute girl is there like yeah, in a coffee that, shop, right? Like in one of your videos, you were like, how do you approach a girl in a coffee shop? She's so cute. There's not a lot of time, you know, and you were just like, Hey, uh, like compliment their outfit or something. You got, you, you just got to know, you just got to be prepared for the moment. And the moment for me was, it was, I was actually making a YouTube video about how to do it, how to dance with a, uh, with a, see, it's endless the amount of topics, right? Dancing. Mm -hmm. So I did a, a one video on how to dance and I have a friend who owns a dance studio. So I was like, Hey, let me come by. Like, why don't we, why don't you teach the guys a dance move? We'll make a YouTube video out of it. And she was like, that sounds awesome. I'll have some of my employees come and kind of help out with the video. I said, great. So I showed up having not even thinking at all, I'm going to meet a girl. I'm just, I'm in work mode. And she had some of her employees there. And one of her employees was this girl who was helping out and we met and we like kind of connected and I got her number. And then I asked her out like a week later and we went on a date and there you go. And that was two years ago. Wow. So it was just being in the moment. Right. And, yeah. uh, and so I didn't know it was going to happen, but I knew exactly what to do to make it work being Good. in that moment. And then you, know? you didn't, you don't walk away from that moment feeling like, Oh, regret or like, Oh man, that girl I met last week. If only I had said something. Right. The only thing I did that I, I asked my friend who runs the studio if it was cool. Cause I just didn't want to step on any toes. Like to me, I was like, you know what? I don't want to go behind the back of my friend and what ask out her employee. Her. Yeah. You know, it's just like, I don't, you know, she might, she might've, she said, totally, I don't care. Go for it. She was totally cool about it, but I could imagine in another world, someone being like, I'd rather you not, you know, I don't want to mix that. Like, I don't want it to be weird. I didn't know. And That's I wanted really nice to be respectful of, of my yeah. friend. And she was like, oh yeah, I don't care. Go for it. I was like, great. Thanks. That's good. Yeah. Have you gotten a lot of guys that have, um, okay. Cause I have a lot of like guy, like comedy fans and listeners of the podcast. And a lot of people say like, oh, I can't say anything anymore. Like the, the me too movement has sort of like rendered me kind of, I don't know. I don't, I don't like the word impotent, but like, I don't know what to say. I don't want to be creepy. I'm afraid of being me too are you getting a lot of that? A lot of those concerns, like with your coaching people? I, yes, I do a little bit. And I tell guys, don't worry about it. Be like pretend it never happened. Because if you're asking that question, most likely you're not the problem. If you even mm -hmm. have to ask that question, good chances are you're not sexually harassing women in the workplace. You're not raping women. You're not being inappropriate. You know, those guys are not asking those questions. So yeah. don't worry. This is about, you know, women getting taken advantage of and, and not asking for consent. So before the Me Too movement, plenty of guys were, not, were being good guys, mm -hmm. you know, 
you're probably one of them. Just if, if your gut says you're doing something wrong, it's probably wrong. It's those guys who are really messed up in the head, like the Harvey Weinsteins and, and whoever, yeah. who are really seriously, you know, mentally yeah. ill. Like and, if she's unconscious, take that as a no. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so I tell guys like, don't worry about it. Like you'll, you'll be fine. I probably, you know, I promise there's probably nothing. All I say is don't date in the workplace. A lot of guys love to meet women in the workplace because oh, they're you're surrounded by them. You're surrounded yeah. by them. It's an easy place to do it. You already form kind of like relationships with these people. Don't do it. You don't want to, mm-hmm. you know. My sister would always get, say, like, get involved yeah, in that. She would tell me that too. She would use the example of like chicken parm. Let me make sure I have it right. Because it's like, let's say you're in the workplace, right? And whoever the hottest guy is in the workplace, like he might seem hot because it's in it's at your job he's the hottest guy at your job but if like you were just out and about meeting dating maybe you wouldn't have picked him and she was she calls that like a chicken parm because like um you know if you're at a really fancy place you're not going to order the chicken parm but if you're like at a pizzeria you're like oh okay this seems nice i guess you know it's all it's relative like, yeah i don't think i'm saying it right no no you're yeah it's all it's all relative it's yeah. you're right but also even even more than that it's just like but no that that, that does bring up a good point it's you know, they're there, they're cute, they're, you're building this friendship with them. Do they pass your non-negotiables? Maybe. That's a really, that's very rare that they do. We're talking hmm. a very small pool of women in your work. So they probably don't pass your non-negotiables. But even if they do, you run the risk of sexual harassment. Maybe, you don't know. And some guys are like, well, she doesn't work in my company. She's just in the building. All right. So now you run the risk of, let's say you guys date and then you break up and now you can't get away from it. And now you have this girl who works in your building that you have to deal with every day. That sounds Mm -hmm. like a disaster. There's just too many cons. And it's for guys who are too scared to go out and meet women because they're just going for the low hanging fruit, which is usually (laughs) women who work at their, at their place, who, who are at their place of work. Yeah. Yeah. Don't date at work. I mean, God, but unless they're so hot. So <laughs> <cute>. <laughs> um, I liked too, you were talking about like how to get like sexy ways to get consent because like I I never thought the idea, like, you know, I don't know. I feel like I never would want a guy to whisper my like, do you want to have sex? You know what I mean? So like, what are some ways that like, this is more for guys that they can kind of Get consent in a way that's not like, girl, do, sign on this line if you would like to have my penis inside you. Just, you know ask, I mean? <laughs> just ask if you should get a condom. Okay. Should I get a condom? That's it. No, let's not have sex with a condom. Wow. <laughs> and then you're like, nice. And you're like, nice, but also goodbye. <laughs> but seriously, don't do that. Yeah. But to, yeah. Yeah. Rather, rather have sex with a condom to uh, prevent uh, unwanted children or STDs. But yeah, just say, should I get a condom? And um, she'll say yes or no. Like as soon as she sits down to the table. (laughs) You guys are about to eat your meal. Yeah. After this, uh, should I get a condom? Because I brought, my pockets are full of them. I mean, I have them. (laughs) Should I go get them? They're in my car. (laughs) My car is full of them. Um, God, what else did I want to talk to you about oh i love that you talk to porn stars because i love talking to porn stars too i see so many similarities between porn stars and comedians and one of your videos was three tricks porn stars use to last longer in bed and that was like fascinating to me because i'm like oh man i got that from an article really yeah i got got a lot of that information from an article i thought wow i should do a video on this and share share this information yeah yeah it was like um focus on the sensations other uh, elsewhere in your body like how are your Mm -hmm. feet planted um really get into breathing because sometimes guys like will get like tension headaches like they really want to come and they really want to focus and it's almost like you focus too hard and like you know what i mean yeah just got to relax Yeah. When you're about to ejaculate, your body is tense. So if you immediately just literally untense your whole body, it removes the sensation. And like you won't lose it, right? You'll just, you have to calm yourself down. And it's not a hundred percent that works every time, but it does work most of the time and just slow down and just don't be so tense. Cause that, I don't, I don't know the science behind it, but for whatever reason, you're, it's like your body is ready to do it. So you're kind of telling your body that's not happening yet. Yeah. So relax okay. everything. Relax do you tell, all your muscles. 
how do you how do you feel about having sex on the first date? Do you tell guys to do it or I go back to? and forth. I would say at this point, probably not. I used to be all for it. You know, just wait maybe a second or third date. I think building a little bit more tension helps. Mm-hmm. And also, I'm even working with a client right now, and he said, I've been doing that, and it's not helping. The women see me as players, and they don't oh, want to man. see me again. And he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in seeing them again. I'm not even trying to just one and done them. And he's like, it's why. not working. And I'm like, that's interesting. I'm like, yeah, you, maybe you're coming off too smooth. It's crazy. Maybe you, some guys will come off too smooth. Too smooth. If they're looking for a relationship, maybe best not to. Yeah, maybe don't wash your hair. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> don't that's funny because like my boyfriend would get that a lot he would he, like i think girls would just like assume he was a player and i don't know if like he actually really was or not but maybe he just had that face player face player face what do you do yeah. to combat it doesn't seem like a you know a problem oh I've, i just have a great face this is this is good non-player face right <laughs> player <here>. face <laughs> that's interesting do you um, work with any women? I mean, I feel like there's so much you can take away as a I woman don't. Like, from your videos. I don't. I don't work with any women. Um, just focus on guys. Mm-hmm. It's better because I feel guys. like there's way less out there for guys. Like there's always, I feel like there's so many more magazines and videos and dating, you know, millionaire matchmaker and, and all these. Yeah. There's like not a lot of resources for guys. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, 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 I've talked to publishing companies and they're just like, we won't do dating advice books for men because they, they won't buy them. Cause they don't want to be seen on right. the subway. A girl, a girl will go and she'll buy a book from a bookstore. Yeah. We're a all about the self. A, a guy will buy a book. Like I have a book. It's called magnetic. It's right here. Ooh, but they'll buy it. It looks like an eye chart. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I never thought about that. <laughs> Let's practice. And What's that we, book about? Or do you know um, yet? It's basically like it's it similar cool. to Hooked. Oh. Um, so it's it teaches it's cultivate confidence, become a, a rejection proof, and naturally attract the women you desire. But my point is is that they'll buy this from Amazon, but they won't buy it from a bookstore. So this is self published. I published this. Wow! The oh, that's they make, your book. This is my book. Oh, oops! I shouldn't have made fun of it. My book. That's okay. Mm-hmm. It does look an eye I think it's hilarious. I never thought about that. And I was like, how have I not thought about that since until now? It's uh, but, catching. but yeah, guys won't go into the store and buy it. So, um, so I'll never, I'll probably never be an actual uh, published from another company, um, which wow. I don't care. It's fine. I, I don't, it doesn't bother me. I don't, I don't care to have my book in a, it'd be fun to have it in a Barnes and Noble, but I'll, I'll get way more um, value out of having it just on on amazon so totally cool and that's actually it's really smart the way you've done it because that looks like that does not look like a dating advice book that that could be about it looks like it could be about business it could be about anything you know it could well until you read the subtitle but yeah what's the subtitle cultivate confidence become rejection proof and naturally attract the women you desire how do you become rejection proof getterhook.com baby uh (laughs) There's a sales pitch. Um, yeah. No, everything we're talking about. I mean, everything yeah. we're talking about in terms of, of not being needy. So I say the two things you want to avoid, being needy and being predictable. Most guys are needy Ooh. and predictable. Have you heard that from girls or what? how do you know that? Not from women. Women don't really know how to describe what makes them attracted to a man. It's very difficult. I mean, it's difficult it's for smell. everyone. It's like... It's yeah, it's confidence. It's um like they they become like they just it's hard for them to understand what's actually happening. Yeah. It's weird because it's all like back brain caveman yeah. shit sometimes. Yeah, totally, totally. So because a woman, what is a woman gonna say? She's gonna say, be yourself, <laughs> give her a compliment, <laughs> maybe bring her flowers. So say all this stuff that she thinks she likes, but in reality she doesn't. And then when she that happens, the bad boy. Ugh. Yeah, you shouldn't give a girl flowers on a first date. That's like, what are you visiting me in the hospital? What's going on? Right. It's too <laughs> That's much. Funny. I'm gonna use that. Yeah. That's funny. For real. So um, so yeah. I mean, don't listen to women, but don't listen to any don't listen to anyone on dating advice. Listen to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> like serious. Like people don't know understand. They're you're gonna get the wrong advice. And I'm not saying that to be like, I'm the best. I'm just saying like you're gonna get wrong information. 
you're going to get a lot of wrong information. And guys who are like good with women, they don't, they themselves don't know what why they do. they're so attractive to women. They don't know. Yeah. So you have to have someone who's studied it and analyzed it and, and, under, and understand it. Not be needy, not be predictable. It makes so much sense because if you like fill your own cup first, right? If you put the oxygen mask on yourself, if you're doing all the things that you know bring you joy, then you're not going to be like needy and like needing the other person to completely. It's like you're both complete and you're just having fun together. If you right. show yourself love and you're doing the things that bring you joy and you're like, I don't know. Yeah. Eating the right foods. It's all the whole package. If you're taking care of yourself physically, if you're like wearing clothes that make you feel good, if you like figured out your haircut, you know, all of that helps your vibe and your energy. And then, yeah, we pick up on that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and working on yourself. He's got, and yeah. And I, and I talk about that in the hooked program is, you know, there's the, what I say, the inner qualities and outer qualities. So it's divided into two. You want to work on your outer qualities, which are your grooming, your hair, your fashion. That stuff still matters. That's the outer qualities. And then the inner qualities is working on the your behavior, your behavior, which is making sure you're not needy, making sure you're you're portraying yourself as more confident, making sure you're able to uh, create an emotional reaction within a woman. Most guys are not able to do that because they're just very boring. Hmm. Right. Most most guys boring? are just boring. <laughs> you got you got to make sure you're having fun. So I talk about that in in hooked is you prioritize your fun. If you're bored, she, she's bored. Mm -hmm. If you're Somebody, going into yeah. a date having a good time and enjoying yourself, she'll have a good time. Yeah. Somebody once asked me like how how to have good banter. Cause I go on podcasts and doing comedy for like 10 years. It's just come so naturally. Like I'm constantly thinking of like, it's almost like a mental illness. You know what I mean? Like puns and witty things to say. And I feel like I can't teach Well, that. you're witty, but you're witty. Yeah. It's very hard to teach comedy and wit that comes a little bit more naturally, but I would say there is a way to teach how you Chrissy have really good banter. And one of the, one of the ways that you're One of the reasons why you're good at it is because you're a naturally curious person interested in people. So that's true. If you, if you take that concept and bring that into your dates, you can have way better conversation. Like I find For that sure. about myself too, is I like learning about people and, you know, and asking questions and I'm genuinely interested. And I have a lot of, I have a wealth of knowledge too, where I can relate to people and I can like just talk about things. And I remember one time, it's 2013. This is like when I was just getting really good at learning how to meet women and socialize. I was on this trip. It's like a free trip to Israel that you can go on if you're Jewish. Oh, the birthright. Yeah. Birthright. Yeah. So I've I went and after I was done with the, with the, um, it's like a group of 30 people and everyone's different, right? Like you have you like, guys all like, fuck. I imagine that's all that. I is. had a girlfriend at the time, uh, but people did fuck. Yes. <laughs> uh, plenty, plenty of people. And there's even a, a couple that got into a relationship. They're married. Oh, wow. Oh, that's and cute. It's crazy. But I remember after the trip, I was like, you know, it's cool. I was like, I was able to connect with every single person on that trip. Like I was able to talk to people about, everything like i was i was talking to the more nerdy people the more extroverted people the more like people who worked in this industry in this industry i was like that's pretty cool and i feel that like i was cool. able to do that because i was curious i was interested but also i read a lot i keep uh, i keep up to date on things that are going on so it's like i'm able to talk to people about a mult multiple different topics yeah. and i'm interested that makes me good at banter but anyone can get good at that yeah. You know, it just you takes a little bit of work. You have to keep work. reading. You have to keep the input. And like, I find with comedy, like if I have no input, how can I expect output? Like how, if I'm not taking any information in, like how am I going to turn that into jokes? Right. Like rips? I have, I have headlines that come up on my phone. Like every five minutes, another mm -hmm. headline comes up. And, and so it just keeps me up to speed on what's going on with the news. Sometimes I read the articles. Sometimes I don't. Like here's one exactly where and how hard hurricane is Isaias will impact the U.S. is uncertain. Like, oh, there's a hurricane right now. So I'm now I'm aware happy. there's a hurricane. I can tell wow. people that. I'm in a conversation. Do you know there's a hurricane right now in, in uh, where is it, on the East Coast? Like, do you know? Yeah, I just saw crazy. a headline that wasn't about Trump or the coronavirus. <laughs> right. <Holy shit. laughs> and then you could be like, oh, man, do you remember Hurricane Katrina? Where were you during Hurricane Katrina? See, now I'm asking that question. I can relate, you know, just yeah. like, just 
you know, being up to speed on what's going on and, and uh, being curious about people. Yeah. That's banter. I love it. You're and hopefully best. you can, you can be witty as well. That takes a little practice. Yeah. And uh, self-esteem issues help for sure. <laughs> it does. I love it. It does. Um, Trip, where can people find you? Are you on Twitter, Instagram? Yeah. Um, wh- where is this going to be shown? Oh, this is going to come out on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud. So okay. audio version on those and then audio and visual on YouTube. So I don't want to get too p- people too many places to go. So I'll just let you kind of know where I'm at. And then, so, okay. So I'm on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. So if you're watching this on YouTube, what's up? Go to uh, go Trip subscribe. Advice if you want to see 700 videos on, on attraction and women. At first, I uh, thought it was going to be about like a trip advisor. I know, I know. I literally, I had a few people in the course of my history reach out to me asking for travel advice. I'm like, that's not, <laughs> that's not what this is. Um, if you're listening to this on iTunes or Spotify, I'm also on iTunes or Spotify. I have a podcast called How to Talk to Girls. Chrissy was on recently, so you can check out that. There's like 400 episodes there. Um, if you're like, no, 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 trip, I just want that hooked program. Like, I don't need more information. I want to get like the right stuff to start getting results right now. Go to getherhooked.com and, uh, and, and um, you'll get the, the course. And if you're like, wait, no, Trip, I want to work with you. Like, I'm convinced, like, like, let me work with you one-on-one. Go to coachedbytrip.com. Ooh, and okay. if you're like, wait, I don't know what I want. That was a lot of websites. Here's one website. Go mm-hmm. to tripadvice.com and all my links are there. So there's options for you. That's great. Trip. thank you so much for coming on the show. We'll have to, I'll have to have you back because there's still so much we can talk about. It was and, great. Uh, you have great questions, great banter. Thanks yes, for having me. I nailed it. All right. Thanks, Trip. Bye. Bye.